course, with the Omicron variant about. We all want to know what it means around vaccine, uh, whether it's a more severe uh, strain. Of course, there's a lot of research being done and some early results are coming out now. So let's take a closer look at the lab work that has been done to see how well the Pfizer vaccine stands up against the Omicron variant. The preliminary results support what we are seeing in the real world, that the variant does seem better able to break through and infect even those who have already been vaccinated. It's not all bad news. A third dose or a previous COVID infection, as well as two jabs, much more likely to protect you, which of course is one of the, the reasons that a booster shot is now being supported. Let's discuss this in more detail now with Professor Willem Hanukum from the Africa Health Research Institute that conducted this research. Prof, thanks so much for your time. First of all, I want to know, uh, did you do this research uh, as a request from Pfizer? Uh, was it completely independent? No, uh, Sally, this research was completely independent. It was done in the lab of Professor Alex Siegel, who's been doing a work uh, looking at the antibody responses to vaccines and to infected people right from the beginning of this epidemic. Okay, so my understanding is it still needs to be peer reviewed. Does that mean essentially another lab has to be able to successfully replicate the same sort of findings you found? Not entirely, no. Uh, what happens with scientific literature is we, we uh, disseminate it as quickly as possible. But after that, the, when you submit it to a scientific journal, the journal sends it to three or four experts to review it to make sure everything is, is, is good and, and that the results are, are reliable. All right. So obviously it's early work and there are loads of scientists trying to get more answers about Omicron. This was done on just 12 participants. Um, but tell me exactly how you did this uh, research, how you conducted it and what makes you confident you've got some really solid results. Well, what Professor Siegel did is he took some blood from people who got the Pfizer vaccine, and in that blood is antibodies. And he, he looked at how well those antibodies would control the virus in a test tube. So when he looked at the Omicron variant, it looked at it could still control the Omicron variant, but much less so than the antibodies were able to control earlier viruses from the epidemic. So, so it's definitely evidence that Omicron is escaping or resisting some of the immunity induced used by the vaccine. Now, three other labs, uh, since Alex has re reported these results two nights ago, three other labs have confirmed that from all over the world. So, and also have extended this to other vaccines. And basically some vaccine responses, therefore, do not work as well as they would have worked against the previous viruses. It's very important to understand that these are lab results and what we need to wait for is real world data. So these are data, uh, effectiveness data on a population basis. And the South African Medical Research Council and the National Institute of Communicable Diseases are at the moment looking exactly at that to see how much, how well the vaccines would still work on a population basis. I want to emphasize emphasize one more thing is that and that is that vaccinologists believe that the vaccines will still work against severe disease and death and that's the reason why we give vaccines mm. primarily we want to save lives yeah. and so if you want to protect yourself against omicron go and get vaccinated and, and i think uh, epidemiologist who writes a really fantastic blog uh, K caitlin jetalina wrote, wrote that uh, omicron has got a better key so it can get through the door easier, explaining the breakthrough infections, but we're still using, it's still using the same door. And that, she says, is really good news. Would you, would you agree with her analogy? I agree. I agree that the vaccines, we think the vaccines will still work against severe disease and death. And so if I were not vaccinated, I would rush out to get my vaccine. Talk to me about the T cells. I've spoken extensively to Professor Mardin. He has said that um, the T cells uh, help to fight the virus once it's got into your system, whereas antibodies tend to keep you from being infected. I think it's very, he's probably really dumbed it down for me. <laughs> uh, but do you share his view that it's the T cells that could really help us um, and that they perhaps get boosted when we have a third dose? 
Well, it's important to understand that when you get a vaccine, it stimulates many different arms of the immune system. And so one, of, one arm is antibodies, one arm is T cells, and there may be other arms also. So what Alex Segal me measured in his, in his lab was just one specific arm of the immune response, which we think is very, very important, but not the be all and end all. So to compensate, other arms of the immune response may still protect you, and that includes T cells. So you're absolutely right. T cells targets the cells that are infected and tries to get rid of the cells that are infected. It's a different kind of immune response from antibodies, which target the virus directly. Explain how you got to uh, the finding that a third dose or a booster dose is a good idea. So uh, we haven't done that, those that work, but Pfizer themselves have released results uh, also using a similar kind of assay. It's called a neutralization uh, lab test um, that Alex used. And they showed that when people had received three dosages of the vaccine, the antibodies work much better in the, in the uh, lab to control the virus. It's also important to know that a very big study has just been published from Israel, where they also showed that, uh, that the third dose of Pfizer is very, very important. And, and this in, in the Israeli setting was 95% protective against uh, disease manifesting. So a third dose seems to be the right schedule for, uh, for Pfizer. We didn't know initially when we started this whole vaccination campaign and, and I was reading a little bit about your study and obviously not many people have had a third dose in South Africa but six of your 12 uh, have had a natural COVID infection uh, plus double vaccination and they seem to withstand Omicron a lot better am I right that is right we've known this for quite a while that if you've had uh, COVID-19 so the disease or infection and then had the vaccine that your antibody responses are much higher and that you that you seem to be more protective all right when are we going to find out about whether omicron is milder or as severe or even more severe than delta or is that one of those tests that it can only be done in the real world so um very important question. So, uh, so there are three things we need to know about this virus. How fast it spreads, and it looks as if it's able to spread very fast, whether it evades or escapes immunity, and, and we've just talked about that. But the third thing that's very important is how severe is the disease that it causes. Now, it's really important to do the studies on a population basis and get lots of data from lots of sources. But we already um, have seen some early data Data released by the NICD, and those data um, suggests that everything points in the direction that the disease may be less severe, especially in those people that have been vaccinated. So I think overall the early results point in the right direction and uh, in the direction that, that, is, that is comforting. But I want to emphasize that we need to wait and get, gain more experience with this epidemic because it's still early and often Often more severe hospitalizations and deaths happen later and not in the first week or two when a new wave emerges. I know that you studied Pfizer, but I think you mentioned a little earlier that there are tests going on on other vaccines. And of course, J&J is the vaccine that's being used in South Africa as well. Uh, any word on whether J&J uh, also with a booster is going to help us uh, not get very sick or die from Omicron? So Professor Siegel is looking at, at J&J right now in the lab. Um, uh, again, uh, I think uh, if you look at another vaccine, the Oxford vaccine, that's pretty similar to the J&J vaccine and the results that have been published by, by an overseas group, it also shows that the antibodies don't work as, as well after that vaccine. So we anticipate that the same result will be shown for J&J. 
Um, again, I want to emphasize clinical data is what we need. We need to wait for these effectiveness results. Uh, we also believe that the vaccines are still going to work because of other, other arms of the immune response that are induced by the, by the vaccines. So go and get vaccinated if you can. Absolutely, and thank you so much for explaining all of that so clearly. Professor Willem Hanagom from the Africa Health Research Institute. Still to come